Welcome to this deep dive. Today, we're really getting into something important in HIV research, the HTI HIV vaccine. That's right. And for you, our listeners who follow the HIV RNA test guide podcast, you know, for updates on testing and everything happening across the U.S., this is definitely something to understand. Absolutely. We're aiming to unpack what this HTI vaccine is, how it works, the science is quite interesting, and, well, what it could mean down the line for treating HIV. Okay, great. Our source is pretty detailed report on its progress, the trials, all that. Exactly. So let's jump in. What exactly is this HTI vaccine? It's not like a flu shot. It doesn't stop you getting HIV. No, that's a key point. It's therapeutic, not preventative. Yeah. So it's for people already living with HIV. Hope the so. whole idea is to um, sort of boost their own immune system so it can control the virus better. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, without needing daily art the antiretroviral therapy. Right, so it's about helping the body fight back more effectively on its own. Who's behind this? It sounds complex. Oh, it is. It's a big collaboration. You've got Elix Therapeutics, the Ursa AIDS Research Institute, the Fight Infections Foundation, and uh, several hospitals over in Spain involved. Hmm. A real team effort. Definitely. Needed for this kind of big research. Okay, let's get into the science then. What's different about this vaccine? You mentioned it targets specific bits of the virus. Yeah, that's the clever part, really. Yeah. It goes after the conserved regions of HIV. Conserved, meaning? Meaning the parts of the virus that uh, tend to stay the same, they don't mutate as wildly as other parts do. Yeah. You know, HIV changes constantly, which makes it super tricky for the immune system. Yeah, like a moving target. Exactly. But some parts are pretty essential for the virus to work, so they can't change too much. The HDI vaccine, basically trains the immune system to zero in on those stable parts. Ah, okay. So it's not just trying to hit everything, it's more focused? Precisely. Instead of like a broad general attack, which is what some older approaches tried, this is much more targeted. It specifically aims to ramp up these things called HIV-specific CD8 plus T cells. Those are the killer T cells, right? The ones that take out infected cells. You got it. And it focuses them on what are called subdominant epitopes. These are um, bits of the virus that the immune system might normally overlook or not react strongly enough to on its own. Okay, interesting. How did they even figure out which parts to target? That sounds like finding a needle in a haystack. Well, it took a massive amount of analysis. They looked at data from, I think, over a thousand people living with HIV globally. Wow. Yeah, and they paid close attention to the ones who naturally control the virus better, mm -hmm. sometimes called elite controllers. They identified which parts of the virus their immune system seemed to be successfully targeting. So they're trying to copy what works naturally in some people. In a way, yes. The vaccine's core component, the immunogen, is designed based on those findings. It's trying to teach everyone's immune system to act like the immune systems of those elite controllers. You had a good analogy before. Shotgun versus sniper. Ah, uh, yes. Think of it like that. A lot of immune responses can be like a shotgun blast, kind of scattered. This HTI approach is more like a sniper rifle, aiming very precisely at those critical, conserved weak points. Okay, that makes sense. So the vaccine exists, the theory is there. What happened when they actually tested it on people? Phase I trials. Right, phase I. The first goals were pretty straightforward. Is it safe? And does it actually provoke the kind of immune response they designed it for? And who took part? These were HIV positive individuals, but people whose virus was already under control with standard RT had to establish safety first. Trials happened at places like the Hospital Clinic of Barcelona. Makes sense. And the results, was it safe? Did it work immunologically? Yeah, good news on both fronts. Yeah. It's well tolerated, no serious side effects, which is obviously step one. Crucial. Absolutely. And importantly, it did induce really strong HIV specific T cell responses both CD4 plus helper cells and those CD8 plus killer cells we talked about. Stronger than usual. Reportedly, yes. Stronger and more focused than what you typically see just from natural infection or even with RT alone. So that was really encouraging. Gave them the green light for phase two. Okay, phase two, AALIX003, right? This is where they test if it actually helps control the virus without the daily pills. Exactly. Now, things get really interesting. They enrolled about 50 adults, again, HIV positive, but these were people who had started RT quite early after infection and had undetectable viral loads. And how did they set up the trial? They split them into two groups. One group got the HTI vaccine plus another drug called Vesitolimod. The other group got placebos for both. Vesitolimod, what does that do? Ah, good question. 
Venetolimod is what's known as a TLR7 agonist. Basically, it's an immune stimulant. Okay. The idea is it helps to sort of wake up the immune system even more and potentially kickstart any virus hiding out in those latent reservoirs, the dormant spots. The hope was that combining it with the vaccine would give a stronger overall effect. Right, a two-pronged approach. So the big question, what happened in phase two? Did it work? Could people stop their meds? Well, first off, safety still looked good. No major issues there. But? And the immune response. The group getting the real vaccine and Vezitolimod definitely showed that strong activation of the targeted CD8 plus T cells. Okay, signs were positive. Now, for the viral control part, they had participants carefully stop their RT for a period, under close monitoring, obviously. In the group that got the HTI vaccine combo, about 33.3%, a third managed to keep their viral loads significantly lower compared to only 23.5% in the placebo group. Hmm, okay, so 33% versus 23.5%, that's about a 10% difference. Is that a big deal in this field? You know, it might not sound huge at first, but in the world of therapeutic HIV vaccines, yeah, that's seen as a pretty significant signal. It's what they call proof of concept. Meaning it shows the vaccine can actually have an effect on viral rebound. Exactly. It suggests the immune response generated by the vaccine is doing something to help control the virus when the meds are stopped. It's not a home run cure yet, but it's definitely a step. Oh, and they also managed to simplify the dosing schedule, which is practical for the future. Right. Progress. What are the experts actually involved saying about this? We've got some useful perspectives. Dr. Beatrice Morth from Ursi Kaisa really put it in context. She said something like, by training the immune system in this focused way, they're getting closer to maybe reducing the need for lifelong art. That's the big goal. Yeah, that's huge for people living with HIV. But anyone else? Dr. Christian Brander, also at Ursa Kaisa, he emphasized the design, how the HTI immunogen mimics the immune response seen in those elite controllers. He said essentially they're learning from nature's success stories and trying to replicate it with the vaccine. Learning from the body itself, that's fascinating. And then Gilead Science has stepped in, they acquired this technology. That's right. A major pharmaceutical company, Gilead, acquired Alix and the HTI platform. Their chief scientific officer, Dr. Mirdad Parsi, basically said, this shows their commitment to finding a functional cure. So they see real potential here. Absolutely. He mentioned integrating HTI into their wider HIV cure research, which should help speed up development and hopefully global access eventually. That kind of backing is a big deal. It really is. Okay, let's zoom out. Thinking about our listeners, especially those using the HIV RNA test guide resources, managing their health day to day, what could this HTI vaccine, if it pans out, actually mean for them? Well, the dream scenario, the ultimate goal is that functional cure, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to control HIV without daily medication. Which would be life-changing. Completely. Look, RT is amazing. It's transformed HIV. But taking pills every single day, mm -hmm. forever, that comes with challenges. Side effects, remembering doses, treatment fatigue, sometimes stigma. For your listeners actively managing their HIV, the thought of maybe not needing daily RT is incredibly powerful. So if the next phases of trials go well, what might treatment look like? Not necessarily a complete cure tomorrow, but... We could be looking at scenarios where maybe people get periodic vaccine boosters, perhaps? Yeah. Or immunotherapy shots every few months instead of daily pills? Ah, okay. Less frequent treatment. Potentially. Mm -hmm. And it also opens the door for combinations. Maybe HTI plus other things being researched, like broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs, or drugs that flush out those latent reservoirs, maybe even gene editing down the road. So mixing different strategies, and personally for someone living with HIV. Fewer pills, mm. maybe fewer side effects, less of that constant daily reminder. Mm. It's about improving quality of life, reducing the burden of treatment, and offering real, tangible hope for long-term remission. More freedom, really. And thinking even bigger, what about the impact on healthcare systems? If we can get to functional cures, or even just much less frequent treatment, the cost savings could be enormous. Lifelong RT is expensive. Reducing that dependency would ease the strain on healthcare resources globally. It really feels like HTI is part of a bigger shift, doesn't it? Moving beyond just managing HIV daily towards actually aiming for these functional cures. I think so, yeah. It represents that push. Now, we have to be realistic. More studies are needed. We need to know how long the effect lasts, exactly how effective it is in larger, diverse groups. Can it be scaled up? Lots of questions still. Of course, it's research. It takes time. But the direction is positive. 
The idea of harnessing the immune system like this, it feels like we're genuinely moving towards that possibility of immune-based control. And having a major player like Gilead invest so heavily, plus the dedication of the research teams, it does feel like a concrete promise, or at least a very strong hope for millions of people. It really does. And maybe, you know, it makes you think, what would a future look like where we rely less on daily meds, not just for HIV, but maybe for other chronic viral infections too? That's a big thought. What could that shift mean for individuals for how we approach long-term health management overall? Definitely something to mull over. Thank you.